Hello. I am staring into the abyss. I am staring at the GCC compilation error log. It's trying to compile some template metaprogramming code that it can't compile. The code's broken. I broke it. I know I broke it. You can see it's, it's clearly broken. But where's it broken? What's gone wrong? That's my job. I need to figure that out. I need to make it go right. With template metaprogramming code, you will often have types that depend on types that will depend on types. Function calls that are specialized on types that invoke other function calls, specialized on types. And you've got a lot of unknowns. You'll have function templates that don't exist until you call them. It's a feature of C++. The function might not work on all types. It might just work on a few, but that's okay because it doesn't need to worry about compiling that function for that type until you first use it until it sees that you're going to use it. And that's where the problem comes in because you may create a type that specializes in types that specialize in types and have a function that specializes on types. And you will invoke that function with that type. And that function invokes another function, which invokes another function, which invokes another function, which creates a template specialization, which fails. And the question is, where is it failing? Where is it? Where is it? conceptually failing right the actual failure could be it's trying to access a member that doesn't exist it's trying to call a function that doesn't exist it's trying to uh evaluate a static assertion that fails it's it, it, it hits a concept that it fails against and so the code at that point fails but is it there that the problem is really or is it the, the function that called that function? Or is it the function that called that function? And you've got an entire stack of, of functions where the problem could be. And the compiler is just trying to give you that information and it looks horrifying. It doesn't look horrifying to you, it looks horrifying to me. Because I've got to use this to try and figure out what went wrong. And it looks it looks worse than it is. It looks worse than it is because this uh we will we will see here we've got instantiation of some dictionary with this with that um and then we see this huge type coming along with lots of template arguments well those template arguments have template arguments have template arguments and so actually this is not a scary function call it's just giving you information lots of information now the problem is 99 percent of that information you do not need you do not want but the compiler has no idea which information you don't want it's trying to give you all of it and it's hard to find the one golden line of log that really makes you go, ah, error is over there. It's hard to find that because you've just got so much noise. But that noise, that noise is, is your own code. And that's what makes it feel so bad. That's what when you see huge amounts of nested types, you kind of think, oh, if only I'd just, you know, scrap this and gone for, you know, virtual inheritance gone for gone for runtime polymorphism but no the entire purpose here is to get lean mean binary outputs get some really nice runtime at the risk of some compile time complexity but we don't have debuggers at compile time no i wish we did if someone wants to do that please please do um but that's not done yet and so you're just given this dump of information at the end that you're supposed to use. We don't even have static assertions that you can add custom information to. They have to be string literals. And that's that's my real pain point. Being able to print at compile time using the new sort of format or something like this would, would be lovely, but um, send your proposals in, I guess. Anyway, let's get to it. I uh, don't like looking at these and I decided to be proactive about it. I've come across this kind of error just one too many times and I got sick of it. And so I wanted to make a tool that makes it easier to explore errors without having just everything unfolded, everything in front of you, all these nested types just like in front of your face trying to understand what's going on. It's not going to help. So um, I was to make a tool. I was going to do it as a C-Line plugin, but I'm not a Java developer. I mean, I can string together some Java, but that does not a Java developer make. I um, I don't know the internals. There's a huge overhead to that. When I was a teenager, I did some web development and I still remember a bit of it. And so 
uh, rather than doing this in Java, we're actually doing JavaScript. I made a, a web utility and it's completely client side. And all you need to do is uh, grab your error log. It can have artifacts from, I don't know, Bazel or CMake or whatever you want, whatever you use as a build system. And I have theoreticallyphysics.com slash GCC Explorer. You can paste your horrible log. And you can only paste horrible logs. It doesn't like nice logs. I, have, I haven't tried, but it does specifically request a horrible log. And you can also give it a, a base um, path to your project. And this is so that it can kind of get a better interpretation of, um, of relative file paths within your log. So you will see here, like in file included from external slash catch to single include that. Now external is not itself a path. There's required some context and that concept, the context is gone. Uh, but if you provide it with the, the path to your project, it will uh, be able to create an absolute path to that. And why would it want to do that? Well, let's keep, click Prettify and find out. So again, this is all done on the client side. Nothing is sent to my servers. I have no interest in um, receiving massive logs and getting my ancient uh, HTTP host uh, processing that. No, this is all JavaScript, so it's it's on your machine. Don't worry, I'm not stealing your errors. Um, so uh, the first thing it does is try to break down the error into stages. It's not perfect, and I would appreciate it if anyone knows the GCC logging format better than I do. Uh, so I did a really naive approach. I figured that the uh, in file included from is a good breaking point, and so I've split the log uh, into that. And they're here cause separate issues. It's not always the case. They often continue onto each other, but it's a nice way of breaking it down without bombarding you with information. Let's have a look at issue one in file included from, you will see that this is now a link. At the bottom left, you'll see this is a VS code link. So this will open VS code to that file. Theoretically, unfortunately, uh, in my instance of Firefox, uh, yeah, that doesn't work, but according to online, it should work. So I'll figure that out. Um, and then if I can figure that out, maybe I'll get it to send to the right line as well. That's all doable. Um, so in file included from my example, liquidation config, don't worry about the details there. Um, and that is from a test, uh, that's included this file and this file is the, the, the problem. And so what's happening here is, uh, well, the errors to me i can see them a little bit better when there is a um when the line starts with like a file path and a line on a chart it splits that out and then puts everything else onto the next line which for me is better because file paths are all of different sizes and what could hopefully be a nice kind of like a line set of um uh set of cool stack should i call it um it's, it's hard to, to parse, but here everything is uh, formatted a little bit easier. Required from, required from, required from. I Personally, my least favorite line to see in a, in a error log is required from, because I've never found it useful, but you know, um, maybe I'm just doing it wrong, who knows? Anyway, you'll notice that before I had lots and lots and lots of template specialization, they've, they've all seemed to have gone. And that's because I wanted them nested. So you'll see here that, uh, Inside our well, anchor brackets, we've got a down arrow. And these, da these down arrows expand out. And uh, on the next line, nested, it shows you what those arguments were. In this case, function and some arguments. Um, you've also got some static result of success, which has some decal type, which has got some decal value of a function, which has got, yeah. Um, so as well as in the angle brackets, there's also in our parentheses. So um, for example, a function call here and our order manager router, we have some auto, some size T, presumably an index, and then some position cancel request. Now, the auto, that's not particularly useful. Dict, that's not particularly useful. What's dict, what's the auto? This is where in the GCC log, you will see it often has a with um, side of it. And I just need to find that because uh, that's never fun. Um, 
Okay, so instantiation of this, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so I can find a key equal, so I'm, I, I, I presume I'm close. Um, I'm completely wrong, it's right at the top here. With long untied in is begin, end is three, call is, uh, 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 and, and so on. And so in this situation, we've got these little like book icons. I thought that would be my bit of UX for the, for the year. Uh, so we've got a book when you click it, it opens and shows you what the types you're dealing with are. So in this invoke if found, we're passing a T, we're passing a call. The, both of those are kind of like templates. And then the dictionary is also specialized on a map. And so by opening that, it just shows you that with statement here. Uh, so my T turns out to be a long unsigned. Who would have thought it? Uh, our call is this thing. Our map is some tuple. Um, this is like a compile time map um, rather than like your stud map. But what, what's inside of it? Well, I can also click the purple icons here. Um, and this allows me to expand out my types in a nested fashion as I want to and identify inside my uh, inside my uh, my type map here uh, what my pairs are, for example. Um, so yeah, we can look at more than just one uh, issue, I guess there's additional information. So this one doesn't contain an error statement. I guess there's also a warning statement, which I haven't included yet, but I will. So this just contains a note. And so um, I guess this issue two is related to this, but in a, in, in a, a bunch of GCC error log examples, I couldn't find like a consistent way of breaking it down. So I just did it like this. Um, so yeah, this is, this is my little utility. We've got arrows, we've got books. And... Um, this purple is clashing on the green, so I'm going to change that. But otherwise, what I would like from you, dear viewer, or one of you, is if you come across a GCC build error and you try it on GCC Explorer, and if it doesn't work, if the output comes out mangled, if it breaks things down in the wrong way. Can you please let me know? Because I did this all based off, or I did this based on the sample size of one. In fact, this exact error log. That's right. I built this entire utility rather than solve this error immediately because this utility is going to help me fix it. So what I'm looking for is examples of things that do work or things that don't work. 